so things are progressing at Man United. Um, you know, you're a regular for the for the under 18s. I think you you, you won save of the season. You've got in team of the year stuff like that. And and then then again, it gets notched up again, uh, as in in terms of like professionalism and and what's next. So now you're thinking about your loans. So I, I remember this loan well. You know, your first experience going out to Stockport. Um, just remind remind us what league they're in and what time of year you went, and uh, tell us a bit about that. Um, I remember it was the start of uh, was it second year school or first year pro? I'm not 100 percent sure, but we had the youth champions league, and we were in the group stages. And I remember PSV. I've come off after about three minutes. I've tore my meniscus in my knee, and I went for an operation. And uh, I was already before that. I was forcing the door down to go on loan. I was saying, "Listen, I want to go and play football. I want to play with men. I want to get better." Because that's all I'd been used to um, before, uh, testing myself against bigger people and and men effectively. And uh, they come to me. I just got back fit, and they come to me saying, "Listen, Dino, you can go to Stockport." Uh, I don't know where, and I was just thinking, "Yeah, hundred percent, I'm going." So I was just straight there. I knew I was training that night. I was going. I was playing. And uh, as as milled, I wanted to show show everything I could do. I, I wanted to show off. I wanted to show everyone. Oh, I'm so good at coming for crosses. I've come for the first cross, and I've been knocked off my head. And I thought, nah. I thought, nah. I wanted the ground to swallow me up, and it was tough because the fans straight away on the first game. I, I remember them calling me out, "Get out, get out. We don't want you in our team." And that get Ian Ormson back in at the time was their permanent goalie, and. Um, the manager got sacked after that game as well. So the new manager come in and give me another chance. And to be fair, I settled in. I learned game by game, realised that I'd, I didn't have to get involved in everything. I just had to wait for what come to me. And game by game, slightly, I was getting better and better. Not not good, by the way. I was, I was terrible. But I was getting better and better slowly and just building up, coming for, <clears throat> coming for my crosses, kicking, the demand of the, the, the demand of the game. Uh, so that all them them thoughts there, Dean. They they all came in the first game. Am I right in saying? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I was at the game. It was at home, wasn't it? Yeah, at home. Yeah, I, I was at the game, and um, I think just just sat there watching. It was great to see. Like, yeah, you did you did come for a cross and 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 got beat to it. or didn't get near it, but I, that didn't affect from watching on. It didn't affect how you how you approach the game. You still. You still try to be positive. You still try to do the right thing, although you were disappointed with yourself. You were able to dust yourself down and and persevere. So, at the same time as having them kind of negative thoughts and questioning yourself, what you what you did outwardly with your behaviour was what wasn't that. Yeah, well, I remember. Um, so I didn't get another cross in the first half, but I remember the second half they got a deep free kick and he's put it in. And he's put it high and I've got all the big lads running at me. And I've come through, I've caught it and I've threw it straight out to uh, Dial Brusa and he's went and scored. And I thought to myself, you know what? I goes, that's made me, honestly, Tim, I'm not going to lie here, coming and catching that and hearing the first round of applause I've ever heard off some, just, just catching a ball. And I was like, whoa, that's made me feel good, that. And it just made me rise an extra couple inches and I thought, Phew. I'm ready for this. And then, mm-hmm. obviously, as I say, the games went on and I just kept learning and learning and learning. Yeah. So so I know you've already touched on it, but the the kind of the games you played for Stockport, just correct me if I'm wrong, definitely wasn't plain sailing. Um, loads of mistakes, um, loads of good stuff. Uh, performance is good, performance is average, performance is bad, a, a real mixed bag of everything. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And biggest learning curve from it, from that first loan. I still stand by to this day and say that was the hardest loan for me, and the most I've ever learned. So yeah. I just think for for anyone out there, for any of the young lads coming through the academies, if anyone watches this, and I just I just think just get yourself out and test yourself early doors, and um, you 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 can get through it. Like it, it is tough at first, but um you can get through it and then from there on it's quite a quick progression yeah so then so then let's just let's just jump on to your next loan because your first loan you've gone um 
you've gone into it and you've played straight away. You know, you were a starting keeper at Stockport. You've got loads of games under your belt or plenty of games. And your, ne- your next loan's at Grimsby. So tell us a bit, little bit about that. Yeah, it, Grimsby was a weird one because I had um, I had Barry Richardson at um, Wickham and he, he was trying to take me at Wickham at the time. And then uh, for whatever reason, Man U wouldn't let me go at the and I was like, I need to go on loan, and they wouldn't let it go. So they missed the deadline, and they went and signed Jamal Blackman. So I was like, oh, fair enough. And then um, that was to play as number one. And then I was trying to get my name out there, and no one was going to take me, like no one. I, I was trying every goalkeeper coach. My agent was ringing me out. No one was interested. They were like, he's never played before. He didn't do great at Stockport. Yeah. We don't want to touch him. Um. And I was just like, oh, and there was one opportunity on transfer a couple of days before transfer deadline, and it was Grimsby. And uh, it was as a number two, James McEwen, nailed on, um, club captain, part of the furniture there. You ain't getting him out. But I was like, in my head, I was thinking, this is a challenge. Let, give me it. But I just wanted to go yeah. and just, just learn. Do you know what I mean? Learn. And uh, so I went there and. Um, I remember training every single day. I was training really well and I was developing. This is the time when I really thought, yeah, I'm really, really, I've really got an opportunity now. Just the way I was training and the way I was conducting myself and um, the way I was going about things. And it was great to be in a full time dressing room with men for the first time at like 18 because yeah. that, that that's a big thing as well. And um, I remember going into the manager and saying, like, look, are you going to play me? He's like, doesn't matter how bad he does, you ain't playing. You were told this before you come. And I was like, <laughs> doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't know. And then um, I went on an international break. We went to, uh, if I remember right, we went to South Korea for uh, international. And then I came back and the manager had been sacked. That, sorry, not been sacked. He'd moved to Shrewsbury. Yeah, Hursty. Um, yeah, Hursty. Yeah. Um, and a new, new manager come in and I've come back and he's gone, you're playing, you're playing next week. So I was thinking, yeah, like my league debut buzzing, I like, can't wait. Um, and then I was a bit nervous for that game, to be fair. And I was thinking, oh, like Grimsby's got my all my fam- a lot of my fam- mum's side of the family's from Grimsby and that. So I felt like I owed it a bit more for that as well. And um, I just went out there and just had a great time, played my league debut. But after my first touch, it was plain sailing and just had a great time there. And I still remember the fans were unbelievable with me. They bought into me and um, I bought into them. And it, it was a fantastic experience all round. And it was disappointing that I had to come to an end so soon. Yeah, so Brill, so even when you even when you go on loan or you get, oh, there is an opportunity where you might not be playing. I think that's a really good example of like being ready to play and and also asking the question around, what do I have to do to play? You know, and, and I imagine you, 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 your performances in training, your attitude, you know, lent itself to like, well, let's give them a chance. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And I think it's, as, as you say, you've always got to be ready because you've got to be ready to be lucky. And if you, if you, um, I, there were so many times, I'm not going to lie, where I was getting so frustrated and I wanted to play it and I knew I was good enough for the level, but it was just, He's, to be fair, James McCoon was doing brilliant at the time. Yeah, really good goalkeeper. I think he was doing fantastic at the time, and to be fair, I couldn't, I, I couldn't argue, but I wanted to play at the same time, and it, it, yeah. it, it was a great learning experience for me. And I just think, just go just to anyone out there, just go and back yourself and back your ability yeah. to uh, eventually get in the team, and um, you'll do well. So, so one nice, one nice moment happened during this period because I think you played. I think you played nine. Was it nine games for Grimsby or seven games? I think. No. Um, yes, yes, and and one, one, one nice moment happened on um, the third of January. Nice cold winter's day, returning to Carlisle, playing against them. Was it? Yeah, no, that was brilliant. I didn't sleep the night before, like, because all my mates were going to be in the crowd and all that. He was going back home for me, and it was. Uh, I'd always wanted to play there, as I say, and. Um, going there, they hadn't been beat there all season um, up until that day, yeah. and we were the first team to turn them over. Um, and I loved every every minute of it, and uh, it was great to go back there and play at Bunton Park. You played well, didn't you? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge of that yeah. one. 
it was a good it was a good game you put definitely played well yeah yeah i enjoyed it that's brill so that so so then like uh, again this has happened a few times in your career i think with paul simpson as well so so then your next move comes and you've you've gone on loan to shrewsbury whose manager didn't actually play you when he was at grimsby but now he's moved to shrewsbury and and you've made such an impression on him that he's taken you there to league one yeah it was funny because as soon as he left the door to go to uh, Shrewsbury, it was just before January, he, he picked up the phone, <clears throat> we want you here as a number one at Shrewsbury. I goes, well, that don't make sense, he didn't play me here. And uh, he was laughing, he was like, I couldn't p- not play you because James had done so good for me and well for me and he was doing well. He said, I want you here, I need you to come and keep us up. He was still on me all for like six months leading up to the League One season at Shrewsbury and I was thinking, yeah, he's, he's serious, he's going to play me. And... Um, I was like, yeah, let's let let let's do it, and I, I went there, and then obviously we were favourites to go to get relegated. Um, we had a great team spirit, great morale throughout the lads, and it was just great to go out and play every single week and w- win so many games when we weren't expected to, and just battle against the odds and be underdogs in every single game, but still get the results we wanted and. To see what we achieved that season, even though we didn't achieve anything for the size of club and for what we were expecting yeah. to achieve, was phenomenal. It was amazing, yeah. And then what did, what, what, what? Because you've stepped up. This is this is like three consecutive years where you've stepped up leagues. So th- this year you've gone from League Two to League One. Um, one, how did you deal with the transition, stepping up a league? And two, what did you bring to the team? For me, as I say. I can sit here and say there's no difference between League One and League Two for a goalkeeper. No difference whatsoever. So if anyone if anyone gets an opportunity to do either of them, don't be stuck up and think, oh, I need to go League One, because I'll be honest with you, there's not there's nothing. You get all the same principles throughout it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think I brought the uh, confidence to my defence in that year. That was a big year for me where I really started to demand my area a lot of the balls were floated up rather than whipped in, so I could really come and help my defence out. Um, started to make big saves at big moments to keep my team in games. and um, Yeah, that that was that was probably it. And then I developed um, the, the even more confidence along the way. Yeah, and did, did you have to make any adjustments, Dean, or did you notice anything with because that was your first full season as a as a in in the league? The other the other two loans had been halfway through. Did you was anything different there? Well, uh, did you have to do anything like, different? It, it was sort of like the unknown of like when I get past nine games, that's the most I ever played at Stockport. It was seven. You were right at Grimsby, and it was the most I'd ever played. And then it was like, after nine games, like, how am I going to sustain it for 20? And then how am I going to sustain it for 30, then 40? But you just get in a routine and it, it does... It does. So how did you how did you sustain it then? Um, I think Danny Coyne was fantastic for me at the time. Because, like, for example, I was always a warm-up guy. I always wanted to be unbelievable and the warm catch every single thing. Um, do everything perfect else I wouldn't play well but he, he, he put his arm around me probably on one of my first games he goes warm ups to get warm doesn't matter whether you catch every ball or drop every ball a warm up is to get warm it's called a warm up I goes yeah you're right yeah so I'd go in from a get to a game fresh as anything because it, I'd just got warm I'd gone in got ready to go and then just went out and performed and um, yeah it's just like everything, isn't it? When when you're doing well, your confidence gets more, and it's it's easier to sustain. Yeah, I think probably just just to stop on that point for a minute, Dean. Like on warm ups, people ask a lot of questions about warm ups and give us a perfect warm up. Like having worked with you for a number of years, I, I I would say that each of your warm ups that I've done with you are probably different. As in, like how long you how long you warm up for, what you do in it, when you stop, when you start. You know, I, I think having that adaptability of of just being able to feel your way through a warm up is a is, is a definite strength of yours. Yeah, hundred percent, and I, I stand by it because th- that sort of changed me in them aspects. It took the mental side away from me, thinking all my superstitions. I had to catch the ten volleys. I had to do this, that, and the other. Um, 
and then you realize you actually don't you just have to get warm and um that was a great something another great thing i picked up off danny and you can you can stop on a mistake as well can't you you don't have to finish a set successfully you can actually finish well i've seen you finish on a on a small error it doesn't really bother you does it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all well, fascinating real so you know having watched a lot of you at shrewsbury amazing season from from the club and you know you massively contributed towards what the club went on that year the journey did and i think like you probably were definitely a fan's favorite there um loads of options for your next loan sheffield united come along tell us about your, your last 18 months there Nah, to be fair, like I couldn't have asked for a better club to get in with and the manager has been fantastic and the goalie coach, Darren Ward, has been outstanding and it's sort of like, it, it's weird because you say everything happens for a reason but the Sheffield United thing come out of the blue, it was like I, w- I had every other club there ready for me and I didn't even know about Sheffield United because my agent hadn't told me. Um because I think at the time we were looking, I need, I need to go and play football. Am I, is there a way in at Man United? Not too sure. Um, is it time to move on? Is it not? And I was like, I just I wanted to stay at Man United because I've always wanted to play there. So I thought, I'll go on loan. So I've said to my agent, right, we'll go on loan. We'll do another year on loan and see where we're at. And he goes, oh, well, Chef United will take you. And I was like, what? The ones played Chef Wednesday beating 4-2? He's like, yeah, yeah. So I was thinking, right now, this is serious. These are big clubs now. These are big, big clubs, and getting thirty thousand in a week. It's, it's a no, it's another step. So it's step by step, and it's another step, and it's that bit higher and that bit, um, bit different. And I remember um, going up there and starting pre season. I was just like, this is quality. Gaffer took me around the stadium, everything like that. I was, I was blown away really, and. Um, I remember sitting there and he goes, oh, we'll hopefully get the playoffs this season. I goes, no, why would we get playoffs? We need to get automatics. He said, we need, to, we need to try and get a bit of a holiday in at the end of the season. She's like, yeah, if you get me automatics this time. Anyway, I just sort of said it tongue in cheek, but there it goes. A great, a great season um, from all the boys, the amount of memories and uh, relationships I've made over the past two seasons there has been phenomenal and ones that I'll live with me forever. Yeah, bro. So, so one of the trends I've seen, Dean, at uh, all your loan clubs has been your your connection, one with the club, but two with the fans. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that, because it just looking from the outside, it seems that it means so much to you. It seems that you're so passionate about like the fans and what they give to you as well. You know, tell us a bit about them them relationships you build up. I'm I'm a lad that wears my heart on my sleeve. I think and. Um... I've always, always wanted to play um, in front of fans and it's obviously always been my dream to play in front of fans and I think people get the perception that I'm this lively character because of what I'm like on the pitch but I'm actually quite relaxed in the sense where off the pitch I'm a quiet guy and chilled out and everything but I just love performing, I I love, I love everything that comes with football, I love the fact you can celebrate and you can let your emotions out and um, whatever club I'm at, I'm the biggest fan. I'm the biggest fan of that football club and I want to do so well for the football club. I want the football club to achieve everything. And that's what it comes down to. I just I, I just love every minute of it. So I just end up celebrating like a madman and they seem to like it and it just goes from there, really. Yeah, I think that's brilliant how, how well you connect with all the fans and also how passionate you are around like around the clubs that you've been to and I think that kind of shows in how you play with your commitment and your your confidence and your belief has been has been brilliant at all them clubs. So some great some great experiences.